Hello, it's Duncan. This week we complete work on our add new item story. Then, while we wait for our owner Alison to decide if it's good enough, we investigate a new technology, HTMX. Let's see whether HTMX lives up to its promise of interactive web pages without having to learn a JavaScript framework. We showed the results of last week's work to Alison, the owner of Guilty Rose, and she was quite happy. She had a couple of observations. One is that she could actually submit a quality of a negative number with our user interface, and if we do that and try and add an item, it all goes a bit wrong. So um, yes, we forgot about that. And the other thing is she'd noticed that if she has this page scrolled a bit, so for example like that, and then she goes to add an item and, and say add, then she gets a new item, but the page scrolls back up to the top. And that's because we do reload. Alison said something like the 2000s called and it wants its user experience back. She doesn't mind much, but it would be nice if the user interface was a bit slicker. We only need to fix the quality issue in order to go to production though. So we'll start today by doing that. Here's the handlebars template for that form. And here's the input. And I think we can just say min equals zero on that. Let's give that a go. We'll reload the page because we've got hot reload set. And then if we click here, yep, we can't go down below zero. That's good. There isn't a limit on how high we can go with our quality, but I don't think that's a problem. Items can have a high quality. We've got sulfurous with a quality of more than 50 here and so on. So I think that should be fine if we were to put in something here and they add, then we'd get an item down here with a quality of 111. I think that's fine. Just before we commit those changes, Alive Zombie 16 took me to task on the last but one video about not having labels for the inputs in the table so that screen readers know which input has the focus. That's a very good point. This particular user interface is just for Alison and her vision is fine, but we might as well practice here. You might remember that IntelliJ was warning us that we had inputs without a label and we had to suppress that warning. If we were to take that out, it does give us the option of fixing things by associating a new label, but it then puts a label inside here and would have trouble making it hidden. There is though, I think a trick we can use, which is to use ARIA label instead of an actual element. So we take that back out and that lets us specify something for the screen reader to use. So this would be new item ID. And you can see that our warning has gone from that, which suggests IntelliJ at least thinks that's good enough. So let's take that into here as well and say this is new item name. This is new item cell by date. Miss the quote off the end of that, which is why it's complaining. And here we have new item quality. Some issue here, uh, wrong quote. I have my own problems today. Let's just put those back on one line. And putting myself in the place of somebody with vision problems, I think maybe just having add here as the name of the button isn't very helpful. So we could add an area label to this as well to say add new item. And maybe even here, area label delete selected items. Now I'm pretty sure that using the delete functionality if you were partially sighted wouldn't be easy. So this certainly isn't a panacea, but I think it's better than it was. Let's just check things look the same as they did before by reloading the page. And that all seems, if not fine, at least as good as it was before. So we think we fixed that. Let's run all of our tests. And the only thing that fails is our approvals tests because we've added all these labels. Now we're only actually seeing the one in the submit button though, because our ad form is hidden by default. We now want to make it shown by default and that's toggled with a feature flag. So if we go to our features, we can say new item enabled is true. Rerun the tests. And now we can see 
But by default, we're showing our add item form. And as we've just looked at it in Firefox, I think we might as well approve it. So we'll approve that one as OK. And we know it's going to be the same, so we'll approve that one. Rerun. And that's good. And we can commit that with, well, this is several things all at once. We might want to split them out, but I think we can just lump them all together and say, this is prevent negative qualities in the add item form and switch on new item user interface. Commit. One issue apparently, let's have a look. Missing associated label, ah, we've missed one. Well, I think we can probably pull the same stunt there. Now we can say aria label, and this is select item. That will mean you need to approve again, rerun, back in here, check that that is as we expect. Yes, 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 good. We'll approve that one. It's a bit of pain we have to approve twice. That's the thing we might want to make better. Approve, run, good. And now we'll amend those. And we're almost ready to push to production. One more thing we can do, which is that, do you remember, remember I've reported a bug against HTTP 4K for lenses and HTML form parsing. Well, well, that was fixed over the weekend. So let's upgrade a version of HTTP 4K and see whether it is indeed fixed for us. So if we go here, we can see that HTTP 4K is at version 5.6. We can open build.gradle. Goodness me, we're quite a way behind. So we'll say 5.6.0. Load those changes from Gradle. Check that everything still works. And it does. And now if we go to our roots, then where we had a null on empty local date, that was our own special version to make things work. I think we should now be able to go local date optional, run our tests. And as far as we're concerned, it is actually fixed. Good. That means we can get rid of that. And commit with upgrade HTTP 4K to fix date handling bug. Splendid. I'll go and do the thing to push that to production whilst you make a cup of tea. Welcome back. Looking at our stories, I think we're going to say this add item to stock list is now done, pending Alison being happy with it in production. The next thing on our list was prevent accidental item deletion. But we've also got this thing that she observed that we reload the whole page every time. And I wonder if we can't fix both of those problems in the same way, which is to use HTMX. Here's the HTMX homepage, and I like to think of HTMX as a JavaScript library to avoid you having to use JavaScript. Essentially, it extends HTML in order to allow us to use other HTTP verbs like delete and patch, but also to allow us to render only part of the screen when we send back a response. Well, that sounds pretty cool. Let's give it a go. We'll go to the docs and installing, and that says we need to add a script tag into our head. So let's take that. So we'll go to our view model. And we don't have a head, so we'll add one of those. And in it, we will put in the script. Now we'll run up the server. Now one of the things that HMX can do for us is add a confirmation to a button. So let's go and look for that. We have confirming down here. And that says we can add HX confirm as an attribute to our button or whatever is doing the thing. So let's try and take that almost right message. And let's try putting it here on our delete button. So we can say HX confirm. Are you sure you wish to delete? I would say want to delete. 
the items. Reload the page, find some items to delete, and click the button, and it hasn't worked. But they have been deleted. Hmm. Go back. I suspect the confirmation needs to be on the thing that actually has the event, which wasn't the input, it was the form. Let's try taking it off of there and putting it there. Reload, select two items, back up to the top, delete, still nothing. And I think the reason that isn't working is that HMX isn't actually involved in this interaction at all at the moment. We can fix that problem with a single property, which is HX boost. An HX boost is our way to start getting HTMX to work. So we can take an HX boost true, like that, and put it in some element. And if we put it at the top level on our body, it will apply to the whole page. And now we reload, select, go up here and delete. And we get a nice confirmation dialog. If I say cancel, nothing happens. If I say OK, it goes away. Now, before we go on, I think we have to talk about user interface testing. The fact is we don't really have any, any real acceptance tests of our user interface. Now, that was OK when all we were doing was rendering. But as we added forms and we've added more interactivity, we are going to have to do more and more manual testing of our user interface to check that it actually works. I think all the time this is an internal tool, that may be okay, but at some point if we open this up to the big bad internet, we'll probably have to start thinking about browser-based testing. Personally, I don't think that automated testing is a moral issue, it's more an economic one. We need to pay close attention to the balance between the cost of testing and the cost of failure to test. For now though, I think I'm just going to run all the tests. Check the rendering is as I expect. Approve that one and that one and commit this as add htmx and implement delete confirm. What are our issues? Well, IntelliJ doesn't know about hx attributes. I'm not sure that's a big enough problem to fix, although there is a plugin. And we don't have a title element on our head. Well, I guess we can fix that. Maybe we should have had that all the time. Approve, approve, run. Done, done, commit. Good. So what has this HX boost attribute actually done? Well, it's told HTMX that we want it to take over the actions of our forms with its JavaScript. Now, in practice at the moment, that's had little effect because we haven't changed anything on the server side. It will intercept the post on our delete, for example. It will still send the post and it will still act on the redirect and it will take our entire redirected page and replace just the body part of it with the response from the server. And because it's replacing the entire body, if we go back to our page and we scroll it up a bit and then add an item, We still re-render the whole page, and so that scroll position is lost. Can we fix that? Well, we can. We can tell HTMX that we don't want to substitute the whole page. So now we'll take out this boost true, and now we'll tell HTMX to take over this form by adding HX post attribute. And that's telling HTMX that when it's active, it should post and it should post to the same place, add item. And if we've done that, we can set an HX target. So we say HX target equals, and this is a CSS selector. And so we can say the table. So what happens if we run that? So we'll reload, put in an item and click add. Oh, the problem here is when HTMX posts to add item, 
we send a redirect to render the whole page. And so we've got our last modified again. I don't actually know where the table has gone. Ah, oh, it is actually there. It's a table with an H1 inside it with another form with the same ID as the previous one. And I think Firefox has basically just given up trying to render that. So you can see inside our table now, we have a copy of our entire page. So in this case, we don't want our whole page, we want just the table. So let's change our rendering to make that a thing we can do. Here's our stock list rendering tests. And this works with an approver. We render a stock list and we check that it's the same as it was last time. So let's make our stock list into a field. Don't know why that's a property with getter, but we can inline that and make it initializer. Okay, we'll run just this test for now. And the test that we have will be broken because we've just been editing our template. So this is where we removed HX boost is true, but added the HX post. So let's approve that. And then we'll duplicate this test, inlining that. Don't know why that doesn't delete things anymore. Duplicate this, and then this is list just stock table. So in this case, I think we'll add a parameter to our render that is just table. And get IntelliJ to add that to our render. Go and have a look. Here it is, and now we have our just table. Now in order to render just the table, we could take the whole table here and put in its own template, but there's a cheap and nasty way of doing it that I think we'll try, which is to add just table to our stock list view model and add that to our stock list view model, which is I think down here, so that's there. And now we can look at that inside our handlebars template. And now we can take the whole body and say, with handlebars, unless just table. And now the end of that unless is going to be the beginning of the table. And then we will copy that and move it to the end of the table and use that to finish off in here. So if just table is set, then we won't be showing this form or this body, and we won't be showing this body and the forms at the top, I think. Let's find out by running the tests. So let's check we haven't broken list stock. Oh, but we have. Never mind, is just stock table okay? Well, we can find out by approving it and then having a look at the approved file, which is in here. And that does appear to just have our table in it, although it has the HTML tag around. It would be neater not to have this bit, so let's go and fix that first. We can move our, unless just table all the way to the top. and unless all the way to the bottom, run. And now we only have a table over oh, one extra bracket. Did I mess that up here? I don't think I did. Check. Ah, no, that <sighs> is part of HTTP4K's approval test output. That one and that one. Not very helpful, I'm afraid. So that's okay, I think, and we can approve it. This stock, however, we seem to have lost the top as well. So we're only showing the table in that case. So it looks like we're not seeing the value of our just table. Let's look back in our rendering, and there's just table. Hmm. Oh, here we are. I'm an idiot. I put just table is true in the whole one that needs to be false there. Run. 
And now this one has the whole page. Good. So we can approve that. And this one has just the table. So we can approve that and run. Good. So now we can render the whole page or just the table. How do we decide which? Well, this render method is called from our list handler. So that's here. And this list handler is called because when we have added an item, this add handler, we sent a see other back to root. So we've made another request. But with HTMX, we don't have to do that. Instead, we can send the content back directly from our add handler and it will substitute it into the page. I'm going to demonstrate this without writing tests and we'll fill those in later. So what we want to do is say, when the request is HTMX, then instead of sending see other, we want to send the content that we would normally be sending for our list, but with just the table. So that is our list handler with our request. And we'll come to in a minute how we send just the table from there. Otherwise, well, when HTMX isn't in the loop, we just want to send our plain old response to the other. And that will happen if we have JavaScript disabled on our client. Will we ever have JavaScript disabled on our client? Well, that's a good question. I think the answer is probably no, but let's keep our options open for a little bit if we can. Okay, first things first, how do we know that a request is HTMX? Let's add an extension property on request and that wants to return Boolean. And we'll take that out of that silly place and put it down the bottom. Now it turns out that HTMX sends request headers to tell us that it's in the loop. And the simplest one of these is HX request, which is always true if HTMX made the request. So let's take that and we can use it in here to say that the request is an HTMX request if it has a header hx request, which is not null. It turns out that we needed to have said return in there. Who knew? But we can just make that an expression. Okay, so our add handler is going to delegate to the list handler if it's HTMX. The list handler now can say, well, if it's HTMX, I only want to render the table. So in here I can say, request dot is HTMX. Note that we seem to have stopped doing TDD now, and I think that's partly because we are experimenting, trying to get something working, and partly because we don't have any browser tests. But let's try this out in the actual app and see whether it works. So we'll rerun our test main, go back to our browser, scroll up a little bit, create a new item, test, 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 add in the quality, and submit. And you can see that we didn't render the whole page. I guess you saw the table jump a little tiny bit, and there is our test test down the bottom. Splendid. Okay, so now we know what we're doing, let's return to our code, and we can add in the same feature for deletion with tests. Just before we do, this is no longer on use parameter. And now let's run all tests to see where we are. So we expect there's to be some assertion failures. And it's just list stock test because that's the only place we've made a change. So I think we can approve that and run. And I think we'll lock that in with a sort of speculative commit of work in progress on HTMX part page rendering, but we won't push that. So first let's look at the test that we've got for new item, see what changes we have to make. So we've got this add items tests and we've got add item here, add item via HTTP, add item with no date via HTTP and so on. And all these HTTP tests are showing that we do is status C other. 
But now if we're using HTMX, we'll actually be sending a response with the HTML for the table in it, rather than a redirect. I think I'm going to assume that JavaScript and HTMX are going to be the default. So we'll change all these, but we'll make sure we have a test to show what happens when we don't have HTMX. So let's have a look. Add item via HTTP. Let's just start by saying, duplicate that, and we'll say add item via HTTP with no HTMX. And that is what we have at the moment. Now, add item via HTTP will now default to our form, but with a header of hx request with the value of true. And what I think I'm going to do is go back to our roots and comment out the code that we've added, at the very least this bit here, so that we can see how our test fails. So going back. Now, when we put that back in, we expect not to have status C other, but has status OK. We won't have a header for location, but what we will have is a body. Now, I don't want to match on the whole body. That's the job of the rendering test. And let's just remind ourselves what it looks like, though. This is the just doc table. And I think we might say that it should start with a table tag, that the first non-blank character should be table and the last non-blank character should be table. So if we go into here and say that's a regex of, and this feels like a good place for AI Assistant, it is write me a Java regex matching a string with table as the first non-white space characters. Now, how do I create a Java regex object out of that? Can I do it without the pattern? Uh, let's go back a bit because we actually want a regex in here. Oh, I'm being an idiot. It turns out that this wants a Kotlin regex. So I think we can just say regex giving a raw string of backslash a backslash s star table. Let's see what we get when we run that. So the first error is that we did get C other. Well, that's kind of what we expect because we now need to go back to our roots and reinstate that and run. And now we expected a value that has a status 200 and has a body that is not null and matches backslash a table, but it had a body that was something table. Hmm, that regex hasn't worked very well. I suspect the issue is about being multi-line. Let's go here. Let's try As they say, we've tried to solve a problem with regular expressions, and now we have two problems. Well, you certainly don't want to watch me trying to work that out. Um, turns out that we had a regular expression that only matched the string up to the table. We needed to add the dot star to say it doesn't matter what follows, and dot matches all in order to match with any new lines after that. I think we might further extend that by saying it must end in table. So that's our closing tag, then any amount of white space, and finally match the end of the string. Try that. And we're good. Now I think I'm going to make a method out of that, which is has just a table element body, and maybe add the header in here, so if we look in here, we can say with HTMX boolean equals, let's default that to true. So we can say apply if with HTMX this header. All right, back up to the top. Add item via HTTP, we know HTMX is going to have with HTMX is false. These other ones are going to be true, so I can get rid of that. And then I can copy this line. 
no date via HTTP, this will be HTMX. So it will now do that thing. Let's try running all those tests just to check. Oh dear. Oh look, here I'm an idiot, apply doesn't work like that. We need let and then if it's with HTMX, it with a header, else it. I think actually that may be run. And then this would be this, and this would be that. Try that. Much better. Now all of our validations will be with HTMX true by default, which is why they're failing, I guess. So we'll go with the JavaScript version, so we'll have with HTMX is true in there. So we'll still be sending a bad request to those. Bad request. Now these cases here where we're doing see other, I think we actually have tested item sell by blank and so on. So I think we can just remove those. So that all of these validations should return bad request. Let's have a look. And then blank date via HTTP, we probably just haven't fixed up. So yes, that should be like this one, copy and paste, run. Okay, that's quite pleasing. I think I might just take the fun out of that, cut that from there and move it just all the way down the bottom. One of our matches, I think the same is true of this post, cut that out of there and move it out of our test. And finally, the very top one with no HTMX, that's, that's now a sort of special case, I think we'll move it right down the bottom. We expect to be using HTMX from now on. And so we'll just move that. I think we could say, leave those in, but put that down there. And now if we look at the structure of that test, you'll see we've got add item, add item via HTTP, add item no date, blank date, via HTTP with no HTMX, and then validations and reports or form errors. I think that's good. Run to check. Now we run our all tests, which is good. And let's amend commit to that, I think. Good, good. And now we want to do a similar thing for our delete items tests. So let's have a look at those, that's here. We've got delete items, and most of these just talk directly to the app, but we have delete items via HTTP here. So this will be the version with no HTMX. And if we expand that and duplicate it, then this is the standard one. Our request is going to have a header of hx request drew and if that's the case then as with the add items test we just want to see the table so i think we can take this just a table element body make it public for now and in here we can say has status okay and has just a table element body that will fail if we run it good Check it is the one we expect, and it is. So now we can go to our roots. And in the case of delete handler, we can do the same thing as we did up here. So we can take this code here, and in our delete handler, we can say the same thing. Does that make everything work? Well, it passes. Let us rerun our test main. Back to Firefox. Oh, but now I think about it, I haven't put it in the view model. So let's go back there and do the same thing with our delete items. So we need to put in an HX post of the same place that we would post our form to, which is delete items. We're going to confirm and we're going to have the target as the table. Hot reloading should work for us, so that if we reload that, select that one, 
come up here, be somewhere in up and down and scroll, delete, say OK. We saw the delete happen here and it's gone from there. Hooray! Well, that's very good. I'm excited by the things we can do with HDMX. Before we go, let's just see if we can get rid of some of these squigglies. I see that I had a title attribute, not a title element, which is why that one is still complaining. So this should be title Gilded Rose. This is complaining about missing a locally stored library for HTTP link. Uh, I don't know why that's a problem, but I can download it apparently. Um, yes, good. Successfully downloaded apparently, although that hasn't changed the highlighting. And these HX post attributes, HX target and so on, aren't recognized by IntelliJ, but we can teach it by saying add those to custom HTML attributes. So we're really telling it that we are extending our dialect of HTML. F2 now. Oh, that's good. All of our warnings are gone. So we'll go to commit. And this is now not work in progress on HTMX part page rendering, but HTMX part page rendering. I think we can commit. Oh no, wait a minute. We'll have to rerun our tests. And then reapprove our list stock. That's this, which has changed as we expect. And we've added the delete items post. Approve that. Were there any more? This one is the same. Approve. Run everything. Splendid. And now this is our HTMX part page rendering. We can commit that and hope Alison likes it. Well, this has been quite a successful session. We've completed two stories. Let's tick them off the list. We'll go with, take that tick and put it on add item to the stock list and prevent accidental item deletion. That's good. And we found that HTMX allows us to smarten up our user experience without buying into a JavaScript framework. And we were able to use it in a nice prototyping cycle with reloading the page and then TDDing the rendering. And we found a way to use handlebars with these unlesses to render only part of the page without splitting the template out into several files. What we haven't done is find a way to show what the result in DOM will be like after an HTMX interaction. So we've been looking at the response, but we can't really look at the resulting DOM. And this means we'll have to test manually until we come up with a solution. Next week, we'll see if Alison is happy enough with the add items feature to allow us to remove the dual items repository. That's the one that's saving to both the database and to our flat file so that we would only save in Postgres, and that will simplify things a lot and should accelerate development on new features. If you'd like to see that episode, then please like and subscribe. And if you've enjoyed this, then I think you'll enjoy the book that I wrote in that price called Java to Kotlin, a refactoring guidebook, details of which are in the show notes below. Thanks for watching.